I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 20th of November, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Latin America. We're still here in Cochabamba, Bolivia. And today I have a very short window in the morning in which to do the episode. I wasn't sure where to go. Wasn't sure what to do. And then I realized I haven't really shown the uh, ciclovia that runs through the city. This is an iconic part of Cochabamba. So I'm going to walk the, 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 the ciclovia. I have to work on that word. And uh, show you guys a bit of it um, because it cuts right through the middle of the city. It's absolutely beautiful. We've shown it a bit and I've seen other people using it on foot, so I don't think it's a problem for me to walk on it, as you can see. So, I'm going to show you more of Cochabamba right after the bump. The Ciclovia cuts through the middle of the city and runs the length of the city. It is an incredibly long way through Cochabamba. It's really, really interesting. And it runs through a lot of, uh, a lot of neighborhoods, but it goes through a lot of parks as well. So a lot of the best parts of the city are connected by the Ciclovia because it allows for residents to move around in some really great ways. And what's nice is, you notice I'm walking on the left because there are a lot of people on bicycle and I don't want to be in their way and I do want to see them coming. Although, I'm not sure what works best. And there is a sidewalk in this portion. So I'm gonna use the sidewalk here. We're gonna come and go as, as we can. But what I've seen some people doing, we'll see if we see any this morning, is there's this bump. This is the one I almost tripped over the other day is uh, electric scooters. I have not seen many, but they do have them here in the city. They actually manufacture them here. And they are a really handy way to get around. In a lot of cities, they, they aren't so good because you have to use them on sidewalks or you have to take them on main roads and that can cause problems, right? They don't handle sidewalks well, they don't handle bumps well, but here, because of the Cyclovia, it is a perfectly smooth, car-free zone through the whole city. So you can get from one side of the city to the other in this really comfortable, safe space. You don't have to worry about falling on rough terrain. You don't have to worry about bumps in the road. You don't have to worry about cracks. It's smooth and maintained and just people on foot and bicycles. So very cool. Notice there are stoplights just for bicycles as well, which is very cool. Of course, I'm crossing one I'm not supposed to. So we have a very tight schedule in the morning that I'm recording this. I'm actually recording it tomorrow. We were busy yesterday. And uh, so I'm doing a morning walk before I do the last of my, my packing to leave. So tomorrow we're heading to La Paz and I'll be filming from up there for all of you as well. Now, I don't know why there's shops on the Ciclovia. This feels like it defeats the purpose. Something's, I don't know. I'm walking hard. I'm out of air. <clears throat> So last night, we went out, well yesterday we went to dinner, went to, a, went to a, a late lunch at Paprika, which was absolutely fantastic. It's one of the better ranked restaurants in the city. A little like pulperias along here. And a surprising number of people milling about. If you're wondering as to the day of the week that you're seeing, this is a Saturday. These shops are busy. So, we went to Paprika, had an absolutely amazing lunch. The food was fantastic. That was really impressive. And then I did some videoing in the afternoon. 
Uh, did some work. Had a very good work day, I think. It's interesting how the roads run along the Ciclovia. Here's like an itty bitty park. Hopefully you can see this. I guess if you get tired while cycling, you can hop up there and sit down. So, so we went out to, to dinner at night. Uh, we just went back, Ozzy and I went back to Menta and got veggie burgers again, because they were amazing. So we've actually done veggie burgers three times this week, twice at Menta, because theirs are just so good. Now we tried one other place. We tried Burger House and it was okay, but they just have one veggie burger. We didn't go there thinking we were even gonna eat. We didn't think they had veggie burgers, but they did, so we gave it a try. And it was okay, but definitely not, not Menta. Menta has like six different veggie burgers. That's so cool. Got like a little school thing over there. This is a very different look of the city. Okay, I love that the Cic Ciclovia has different, different places you can go. How cool is that? And then another little step up. Oh, I see. I didn't read the sign. Zona de Descansa, a rest area. So there's a built-in rest area for people on the Ciclovia, but it's got this separate path over there and it goes up and it's built over top of the cycleway. That is really cool and unexpected. So the Ciclovia comes down here You can't tell all of these signs are against domestic violence. Oh, we got some cool graffiti over there. Check that out. And another rest area over here. And it's a little thing that's going to catch up with the Ciclovia again here. This is a serious investment that they did in the city and more cities I think should do this. This is fantastic. Make it so that people can walk and bike through the city without a problem. That's now some places like Leon where I live or an old colonial city. There isn't exactly an easy way to do that. There is actually, I have, I have proposed plans on it, but it's much more of a struggle than here where it's a young city and they're able to make plans around it and such. Now, if you watch my shorts and if you're not watching my shorts, you should be watching my shorts because I cover a lot of cool stuff and things happen in real time. And on, one I did, by the time you're seeing this, probably about a week ago, I showed this amazing bridge on the Ciclovia. And this is that bridge. I just came up on it. Now it's funny because with Ozzy and Alan and Anna, we're running around the city in a car. And obviously that is a cool chocolate shop over there, by the way. And I don't know what this is, but it's a cool building here and a gorgeous house over there. Check that out. Ooh, that is a house in the middle of the high rises. So when we're going around in cars, it's hard to tell where you are in the city, how close you are to things, how things connect, especially if you're not driving. And Ozzy especially 
gets lost and drives all over the city. So we're constantly doing loops and going across town and then back again. So you don't realize you're right next to where you started. And uh, so we were at this bridge and I had no idea where it was. I'm just gonna pop over here. It's a little restaurant down there. And those look like just beautiful apartments. Constantly impressed by Cochabamba. And uh, so I had no idea that this bridge was close to where I was staying. Because I started this walk in a spot that you guys saw a couple days ago. So you can kind of connect it all together, get a feeling for the city. Now this is why I was heading down this way. I wanted to see this park, but I think walking to Ciclovia is gonna be more interesting. So we're gonna stay on that. But I'm gonna show, this is one of the parks that runs through the middle of the city. And continues this way up the hill. They're building a new high rise over there. So this is a really nice area. Continue forward, I'll give you a little shot from the other side of it as well. I just realized I've probably been holding the camera too low while on the bridge, sorry about that. Okay, so this is the other side of the park. I should note this is facing north. We're walking west. I also need to note that this is Paprika, this beautiful restaurant on the corner with three floors. That's Paprika where we ate. I can't recommend it enough. It was amazing. Thank you, Alan, for taking us out to dinner there or lunch. And uh, oh, I had a smoked trout ravioli. Wow, was it good. Everyone's food. Really, really excellent. Alan said the steaks were very good. He was quite impressed. This is south, looking at the park. Let's wait till I'm not in people's way. And we will continue on. I'm going to extend my tripod and make it easier to hold the camera at a better height for you. Sorry if it's a little bit shaky. So I was at Paprika when I filmed this bridge for the shorts. Oh, and there you get a really good view of Paprika. You can see the seating up on the third floor. That's where we ate. But they also have cool outdoor seating. I really like this. I want to get some video of those particular outdoor dining options because uh, I can think of some places where I may want to have one of those. That is cool. So after... Two days here, Alan and Anna are still raving about the city. Very serious that this is a place that they are interested in. Having lived for a few years in Nicaragua for Alan, Anna grew up there. It's uh, he's really learned a lot more about what he likes. Uh, kind of gotten the Latin America adventure under his belt. Learned how to how to handle certain things like what it takes to travel back to the U.S. from different places, what can be easy, what can be hard, what things he's looking for in a location. And I think a major change for him is when he was first looking, which was many years ago, right? Six years ago, seven years ago. One of his top things was he wanted to retire on a beach and have the uh, not exactly Caribbean life, and that's not what he went for, but something akin to that, something with that lounging on the beach, having a cocktail, swimming in the ocean, and now having lived for a while at the beach, like on the beach itself, and for a while in a beach city, or a city with a beach nearby, things that he has learned is that actually going to the water, not as big a deal, having a swimming pool, 
bigger deal. Okay, got to cross this road. Not too busy. Looks okay. Take my chances. Oh, they're turning. I am in the way. And that uh, food variety and nightlife variety, not nightlife amount, nothing. Nothing's going to beat Leon for the amount of nightlife. But when it comes to the variety of things to do, uh, Nicaragua does suffer. Not that you can't do. I'm going to wait for the, to go past this this loud thing, but check out this cool pedestrian bridge over the Cicla Via. <clears throat> so one of the problems in Nicaragua, especially in Leon, variety of food is very low. Quality, pretty good. Number of restaurants, not bad. But so many of those restaurants do the same things. And even those that don't tend to close early. You have a limited time frame to get a limited range of food. And uh, we have someone who cooks for us at home. We have our own restaurant. Those things help. To some degree, my wife cooks a variety of things. My kids cook a variety of things. And so that offsets some of that for us. We also travel around Nicaragua quite a bit. And one of the things, we've got a nice football field over there. Now we're in some quiet streets. Lots of nice quiet houses along the sides. But we do things like we go to Managua regularly, all the time, easily every week. And even if like the kids don't go, if Dominica's there shopping, she'll grab takeout food from a different restaurant, even if it's just Burger King, right? Burger King veggie burgers and bring them home and have that variety. And uh, Scandinavo, the Barrio Cafe, right? There's just restaurant after restaurant with amazing food in Managua. Managua has, is a foodie city, has, but even there, it doesn't have the, the breadth that Cochabamba does. Now, it's half the size of Cochabamba, so it should logically have about half the selection, so that makes sense. Managua, I think, overall, is pretty good for food. Better food selection than any U.S. city at the same size, I would say. Except maybe yes, New York. And uh, so that's very, that's very good. We do things like that. Or we'll go to Madagalpa, or we'll go to Hinotepe uh, and try, you know, the Malaysian restaurant. We'll make an effort to do those things. So for us, we're solving those problems by treating Nicaragua as one large city and Leon more like our village within that, or our barrio within that city. Uh, but Alan doesn't have a car, and he's not a big driver, uh, distance-wise. He doesn't like to take long-distance car rides. He's not a, not a road trip guy. So a lot of those things are not very appealing. He's not, not likely to want to take a road trip uh, to go to a different restaurant, whereas that's something I would do. So especially for him, for anyone who's going to be without transportation, anyone who doesn't want to ride public bus to go out for an evening on the town, anyone who doesn't want to travel to put those things together, which is most people, right? That's not a normal thing. It's, it's something that we're willing to put up with. It's not something we like. Um, for, for people like the majority of you, that's going to be a very big negative in Nicaragua, especially in the smaller cities. Managua, you're probably okay. Uh, but other places you're going to you're gonna feel it, especially after a couple years. And someplace like Cochabamba has so many restaurants and so many new ones popping up, old ones closing, right? You, you really can potentially eat at a new place, try a new bar, go to a new cafe every day, if that's what you wanna do. And you may go a really long time before you have to worry about repeating anything. Of course, you can repeat when you find something you like. All right, let's pause while we cross. All right, I gave the camera a few minutes to cool down, gave myself a few minutes to cool down. I want to point out this is a very ritzy, nice, fancy house, and they have all their clothes hanging on the uh, the outside fence. <laughs> that is the, the dichotomy of life in Latin America. We got an attractive church over there and uh, some beautiful houses over here. Boy, there's some nice stuff in the middle of the city. Now, the nicest stuff is up to the north, which is that way. Uh, going up the hill, there are some 
unbelievable neighborhoods of mansions up on the hillside. That stuff gets really, really cool. Okay, that truck is backing up. But check out this street. This is, I mean, this is some fantastic housing. There's a little high rise in there. And then this is a really cute bit of the Cyclovia. Oh, these houses. Oh, I didn't see this all. Wow. So right there where I took the little break, I crossed the street and then sat for a few minutes to let the camera cool down. If you're, watch, if you're one of the dedicated followers who also watch my shorts, which I hope you all are, that is where I took a minute and recorded a few of the shorts. So if you notice that it looks like that spot, that is where it was. That way I can use my, my iPhone to record some stuff while my GoPro cools down. It's a little bit ridiculous how much I have to manage those kinds of things. Everything, even here in Cochabamba, everything overheats so fast. All right, this is gonna take a minute to cross. And we are back. Beautiful little park right over there. Can't see it from all the traffic. That's unfortunate. So I was just recording this in a short as well. Yesterday, it's about halfway through my trip in total and I don't like to, to pack heavy. I like to bring as little as possible because it just, when you're a full-time traveler or a heavy traveler, I guess I'm not full-time anymore. Well, that's sad. <laughs> and, uh, I like the, the exercise stuff over there. Sorry for swinging the camera around. I'm kind of doing things as there's traffic and stuff as best I can. I like to travel really light. And I think most most big travelers agree. It's always one of the things. If you talk to travel specialists, you talk to people who really are into it, one of the things they say is they, they never regret bringing too little. They always regret bringing too much because you have to carry it everywhere. You have to protect it. You have to worry about it. You have to pack it and unpack it. You have to look at it and realize you didn't use it and feel stupid. So one of the things that I do, and I learned this, in my trip to Guatemala last year. So it's funny that I never did this, but we typically did very slow travel. We would go to Europe and we would, you know, stay for months. So we would have a, you know, a house and a full rental and washing machines and dryers and time to put out our clothes. And we would wash over and over again because we lived there. We weren't just tourists doing an Airbnb for the night or even a week. So most of these Airbnbs, they don't have washing facilities or anything like that. So when I was in Guatemala, what I did was, and this is funny because I did it not in the city where you would think it would be easier. I'm sure it would be. I did it out in Lago de Atitlan. I found a laundry service in the village and just went there, dropped off my clothes in the morning, picked them up in the afternoon. It cost a couple of dollars and someone did all my laundry for me. And it was such a great idea because it allowed me to carry half as many clothes because of the length of the trip, you could do it, you know, if you brought five changes, six changes of clothes, you could do it once a week and make it indefinitely if you want to. But if you're taking a trip like this where I'm doing two weeks, bringing enough clothes for one week, doing laundry, and uh, oh, you can't really see it. There's, there's another park up there. Looks really cool. It's like a rock wall. Ah, oh, wish there was an easy way to go see that. So I'm able to bring much less. So last night we stopped by a laundry service and dropped off the clothes. Really, I should have done a day earlier. Oh, that dog is right in front of that car. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Not as close as it seemed, but man, that stresses me out. <laughs> this is my life. Every time I see a dog anywhere, I'm so terrified something's gonna happen to it. Never see anything happen to dogs. Just absolutely terrified that something could happen. <sighs> anyway, I'm such a dog person. This house is really interesting. So, we're getting very close to what needs to be the end of this walk. I do have to get back and get out of my Airbnb. So it's not the end, just has to turn around at the farthest extent, I guess is how I should put it. So the, so we dropped off the clothes 
and they're gonna do them overnight. They're supposed to be ready for me at one o'clock this afternoon. So my, my quick schedule is I'm getting out of my Airbnb at 11. It's currently 9.30. And then we're planning on going to El Cristo. That is the Christ on the Mount. We're gonna go up there. Ozzy says that'll take two hours. Probably takes more. Do some light filming for you guys. Hopefully get hopefully get a bit from the mount. That that should be cool. Uh, then we should be able to get the laundry. Then we have a little bit of time to do something else. Probably take Alan and Anna around the city and show them some things that they're interested in because they're really interested in the city. And uh, this is interesting. I don't know what this is. These little white huts with all this. I can only imagine it's kind of a laundry, like an outdoor laundry thing. Hola. And uh, and then at about four o'clock, we need to be at Cochabamba Airport, which is going to be plenty of time, right? Our flight is at six, and it is a tiny airport. As far as I know, it only flies domestic. We are flying domestic. Our flight is only 50 minutes. The flight that we're taking goes every two hours all day long uh, up to La Paz. So this is going to be very, very easy. But you don't want to miss things. You don't want anything to go wrong. We have a lot of friends up in La Paz who are ready to get us, ready to coordinate on things. Uh, they're going to drive us around. It'll be dark, so I'm not going to film La Paz tonight. But we'll be up there and settling in and uh, pretty much going straight to bed. It's 12,000 feet. You think I'm out of breath now? It is going to be rough, very, very rough. And uh, last night we were out, Alan and Anna were starting to feel it. It was their first full day in the city. Uh, so, you know, it gets better every day. I'm out doing these walks. Uh, you know, I'm out of air, but I'm talking continuously, as you know. And I'm, I'm honestly walking decently hard. Like I'm moving along at a clip because I want to get as much of the Ciclovia for you as I can. Oh, cute little side street. This building over here is cute. Notice that that top floor is actually open. I can't tell if they have open ceilings for immense airflow, which is my guess, or they have like a little tiny balcony. I'm pretty sure they have open tops. So if you're in those rooms, the air just comes right through. It's pretty neat. Oh, cute building over here too. Give me an excuse to stop for a second. A little bird bath. I wish I had time and the equipment with me to rent one of the electric scooters and strap up the GoPro onto it and zip the entire length of the city on that. That would be cool. I think you guys would really, I, I would like it. It'd be so much faster and see the whole city. Check out these houses. I love this whole style going on here. The little replacement for the white picket fence, tiny gardens out front, big houses behind. Very cool. I'm getting some solid exercise on this trip, which is nice. I was really worried that being in a foodie city, I was gonna come here and having Ozzy to drive me around, it was just gonna be a ton of, let's go out to eat, let's go out to eat, let's go out to eat, and just driving from place to place. And that is not at all what we're doing. So I just wanna show this is a, it says sport group. I think those are gyms on the upper floors. I think that's actually a multi-floor gym, but that's Masala, a really nice looking restaurant there on the first floor. Cool. Got quite a bend in the Ciclovia here. I'm impressed that the camera's holding up this well. If 
from the heat. I mean. So far, we've gone one and a half miles, which is nothing dramatic, but it is. I'm gonna move this rock before some cyclist gets hurt. I don't know where to put it. Way up there. That didn't work right back on the... Wow. Well, that's why it's here. Hold on. You gotta fix this. Okay. <laughs> Ah, that is what we're hoping to take on tomorrow's show. So be watching for that. Hoping to ride those. They have them here. I hope the light is good enough in here. You can see this artwork down to this one. This one's actually really good. This is how underpasses should be. So there is the cable cars up in La Paz, which I really, really, really want to ride. I sure hope I'm not so sick as for that to be a problem. Okay. The way that the Ciclovia just cuts through the rest of the city is really cool. Okay, so these are really small houses, but they're actually on the Ciclovia. But they have this kind of mini road parking lot for themselves over there. So they can park close and then just walk across the sequel. Yeah, that's neat. Neat, neat. All right, people are texting me. I need to figure out what's going on. We're gonna take a brief break. Oh, there's the electric. Here's where they are. We've gone far enough in the city that we finally came across them. Wow, and they're right on the Ciclovia. That's pretty cool that you can rent them here. What a cool design. That's like a parking lot for Walla Walla. And there's a tiny little park here as well. I'd ride over there and sit down, answer some text, see what's happening. And uh, nice houses over there. We're definitely in a different barrio, but I don't know what barrio this is. I know we were, we were in Cala Cala for a lot of that, but we've definitely gone farther than, than that. So not sure. We're going to take a quick break, see what's going on. All right, I'm back here at the little park. You can see where I just came from, sat for about five minutes. I had to talk to the person with my Airbnb that is uh, for tonight in La Paz. It's always a lot of coordination to have to do with that stuff. So we're at a point where I need to turn around. I need to get back and check out. Unfortunately, there's so much more of the Ciclovia that I'd love to show you guys, but hopefully I'll be coming back to Cochabamba. This is a very cool city and I do have uh, employees here, so that is that is important that this is a place where we've been working for a number of years and I just never made it down because of COVID. Had it not been for COVID, we would have been down three, four years ago easily. Uh, we've had people here for at least five years. And uh, so this, oh, no, little dog in the road. Come on, little dog. Jeez. He just won't get out of the way of the car. Okay, he's okay. Really dumb. My gosh. They had to stop driving because he couldn't, he was underneath the tires. Show him that little dog who clearly needs to go into his house and no one's letting him in. Oh, he's just a cute little dog. Okay, so this is where I'm turning around. I'll show forward so you can see as much of the Ciclovia as possible. Continues to be a beautiful way to, to walk. And then this is a car road right here. I'm just gonna stand here for a second. So a little tiny river, I think river is not the right term. Um, I think this is called the canal actually, uh, runs through here. This is actually looks pretty nice. The water is, I mean, I wouldn't drink it, but it, uh, standing here, you can see that it's clean and I'm going to start walking back and show you some of this. Cause this is very cool right through here. And you did not get the impression of this at all. And there's some neat houses along here, small, but neat houses. And we have this park all along 
this one side. So this is a really nice area of the Ciclovia. A little bridge over that. And uh, time to hoof it back. Do what little bit of charging we can. I don't know, there's no time to upload anything. Ooh, speaking of uploads, one thing that I'm very, very thankful for is I've been able to edit and upload enough videos that if I am not able to upload a single thing in La Paz or a single additional thing here in Cochabamba that I do not have to upload again until I am in the Hilton, well, the Hampton Hilton uh, Airport in Costa Rica. So I have, see that, that's like a ancient looking, that's something that should be in Europe, that little stone culvert going underneath. Right over there, I'm gonna blow out the camera here a little bit. So we go back under the bridge. And uh, so I'm feeling really good. I was so worried that I was not gonna be able to get things recorded and uploaded and that I was gonna miss days and uh, that we weren't gonna be able to get thumbnails and stuff done, but I've got them in far enough ahead of time. Valentina should be able to do the thumbnails for you. She's actually in Iowa. Everybody say hi to Valentina. She's in Iowa right now for Thanksgiving. And uh, so I'll, I'm actually already uploaded through Thanksgiving because I will be in Costa Rica on Thanksgiving. And uh, if I upload one more, then I'm good to get myself all the way back to, uh, to Nicaragua. And I can do uploads from home, which will make life much, much easier. And I plan to do more before that, but just in case anything goes wrong, I am now prepared. So that makes me feel much better. Much, much better. <laughs> ah, I stress out about these things. This is a big part of my day, you know? So anyway, so the whole laundry thing, uh, I'm very, very happy that I learned that trick and it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that obviously doesn't take much to figure out, but it just doesn't occur to many people, I don't think, that you can do that. You might think, well, I can find a laundromat and do it myself. Oh, I can wash my own clothes in the, in the apartment. Sure, you think of those things. But to think of taking it to basically a dry cleaner and having them do it, you know, you're on, I assume you're on vacation. Oh, I should point out. So this just happens to be an acai bowl place but all over Bolivia because acai comes from here so it's a very popular food thing they do it just everywhere I'm gonna show that sports club I'm gonna check my audio yeah, it's doing well and then whoo the sun is the other direction so I'm gonna show myself a bit this is an exhausting walk even if the air wasn't then I'd be a little bit coming up on two miles. So it really hasn't been that far, but it is, it is a bit when you're, when you're walking fast and feeling the pressure of being out of time. If I'm able to keep up the pace back, I should be back by 1020, 1025 to my apartment. I don't need to be out of it till 11. So that's not bad at all. Just gonna shorten this up. These are those really cool houses again. I'm hoping I get just enough time to edit and finish up one other video while I'm at the apartment. I've got one that the, the battery died just as I was finishing it, but I don't know exactly where I was. That's the hardest part. I lose hours trying to figure out what I missed saying right when the camera overheats. That's why bringing two or three cameras at home helps so much. It saves me from that. I just swap out the camera and keep going. But here, I don't have that option. I'm glad I traveled to just one. It has made this very easy. I don't have to keep track of a ton of gear. One camera, three batteries, an external charger, the one Ulanzi tripod grip. It's my entire, entire suite of tools on this particular trip. And of course my iPhone. 
show you. This is beautiful with the trees. I'm really enjoying days and days of walks. I get I get so distracted on these walks. So with the with the laundry, my point was when you're on vacation or even if you're just doing a busy business trip like this, whatever, your time is generally short. It is very rare that you're in another country, you're doing something exciting, and and you have unlimited time. Right? It's like always time is precious. And that's where a couple dollars to have someone do your laundry for you. Look at that beautiful apartment building up above the Ciclavia. Wow. I didn't notice it the other way. Those couple dollars to get your hours back, to not have to carry extra clothes, to not have to worry about, are your clothes gonna dry in time? Did you successfully manage to wash them? Do you have to carry soap around? Skip all that. It's dollars, just a couple dollars. I know when you're a backpacker and you're on absolutely extreme budget and ten dollars a day is all you have even dropping three dollars to have laundry done can devastate your budget but to give you so much for so little it's a uh, consider it think about how it can make your life easier budget for it <laughs> and don't wait don't wait to do it till nine o'clock at night like me. <laughs> do it before you actually need it and do it during the day. Mornings are good, so you can pick it up the same day. But going past the laundry place again. Ah, uh, that's why I didn't notice the tall building. It was where laundry was. We're so low compared to the road that it's like giving the buildings an extra story or probably two or three stories worth. Makes them really tower over you. So something we haven't talked about, because we weren't ever in a spot where we could show it on the show, but just, as he says two months ago, so it's probably like four to five months ago, uh, Coach Obama just put in their first train. Now it's a tram. It's light rail, above ground, very simple, and it only runs a few times a day, which makes extremely little sense. So I think the city is struggling to figure out how to make it sensible. And he says that the people are really like nervous about it. No one understands. And of course the hours are stupid. So I'm not sure how you would use it. I've seen the tracks, I've seen the billboards, but I haven't seen the train at any point. And I've walked around quite a lot. So uh, not as useful as you would hope, but it's encouraging that they just put in a new, a new tram all throughout Latin America. One of the things that is significantly lacking is rail networks. Panama has a subway. Costa Rica just put in a train in the last couple of years. Nicaragua just announced they're putting in a train. There's little bits here and there, but there was a time when Latin America was very train heavy. And then nearly the entire region moved away from, from rail, especially for passenger rail. Cargo rail has remained in some spots, especially in the Bolivia, Chile kind of zone where it's massive distances and big cargo needs to move around. A lot of mining, a lot of heavy stuff. So rail has survived in a cargo sense in those areas. But passenger light rail, trams, subways, all of that either tended not to happen or has been removed, which is so sad. Nicaragua had such a great rail, rail network and, and such a great future for a rail network and then they tore it out when a US-backed government came in and destroyed public infrastructure and took out public transportation. And it's such a big investment, they've never been able to put it back in. And that was only in the 90s. It's not some long time ago thing, right? But thank goodness the Chinese are helping to finance replacing it. All right, the camera overheated. I knew we were pushing it. 
but uh, I'm gonna be wrapping up the day here. But since I'm coming back to this bridge, I wanna show this to you because it's just such a cool spot to film. I'm gonna put the camera up, hopefully get a bit more of a view for you guys. And while I'm doing that, I don't know how long the camera's gonna last. So I oh, hope you've been enjoying today's walk. Stay tuned for our footage of La Paz coming up very soon. Hopefully more of Cochabamba tomorrow. As always, like and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show, share on social media, post some links. We're here in Bolivia, so those of you who are like, you know, talks about Nicaragua a lot, I don't know anyone who's interested. This is completely different content. Maybe you know some new people who are thinking this is pretty cool, whether it's travel. Bring this down. That's paprika again. Whether you're interested in travel or relocation or just seeing the world. Thanks for coming along on my walks with me. And uh, if you like to support the channel, you can help make this possible. Buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Buen dia. Buen dia.